Hello everyone, this is Refresh and I am here to bring you a battle between the two Theros Beyond Death Planeswalker decks and the Defeat of God Challenge deck from Journey into Nyx. We'll be playing two games, first on normal difficulty with three Rollicking Throngs and then we'll be playing on hard mode. And for these games we'll be using three hero cards. The first hero card is the Harvester which says tap, draw a card, then discard a card. The Explorer which says you may play an additional land on each of your turns and the Vanquisher, which says your starting hand size is increased by one, your maximum hand size is increased by one. Because I only have one of each of these cards, we're going to be applying these cards to both decks simultaneously, and we'll go ahead and get started right away by drawing eight cards apiece. Ashirak draws a Farika Spawn, Mainrak Harpy, Swamp, Mainrak Harpy, Island, Glimpse of Freedom, Swamp, and Sleep of the Dead. I think this is an acceptable first hand. Elspeth draws a Plains, Karametra's Blessing, Plains, Plains, Legion of the Lost Pride, Daybreak Chimera, Plains, and Plains. Not a great start with all the Plains, but you know what? I think it is something that we can keep. We'll go ahead and get started by playing the Swamp and the Island over here. We'll then play two Plains over here. We'll tap both of the Plains and play Leonin of the Lost Pride. It's a 3-1 Cat Warrior. And when it dies, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. And with that, we will pass the turn to Xenagos. Xenagos will cast the topmost card, which is a Dance of Panic. It's an enchantment as long as five or more revelers are on the battlefield. All revelers have haste and attack at each turn if able. They'll also cast a Impulsive Charge at the beginning of combat this turn. All revelers gain haste until end of turn and attack this combat if able. So the revelers are all going to attack. And we're just going to take this hit because I'd rather remove the two twos from the graveyard and three damage is not the worst. We'll take three and go to seven. At the end of the turn, we will tap the island and the swamp over here and cast Glimpse of Freedom. It says draw a card and it has escaped two blue exile five other cards from your graveyard. We'll draw a card. This is another Glimpse of Freedom. We will tap the Harvester and use its ability. Ashiok will draw an Underworld Charger and we will discard the Glimpse of Freedom. Elspeth will draw a Plains and discard the Plains. We'll untap. Ashiok draws a Devourer of Memory and Elspeth draws a Daxos Blessed by the Sun. We'll play two Plains over here and a Swamp over here. We'll tap all three of these and we'll cast the Underworld Charger. This is a 3-3 Nightmare Horse. It can't block and escapes for 4 and a black and exile 3 other cards from your graveyard. It escapes with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Elspeth will tap the 2 planes and we will play Daxos Blessed by the Sun. This is a 2 star enchantment legendary demigod and its toughness is equal to our devotion to white. That's 3 right now. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield you'll gain life. And now that we have 3 We'll spend two more mana and cast the Daybreak Chimera. This is a 3 thief Chimera and it costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to white. Our devotion is three, so it only costs two white mana and it has flying. And then we are going to have to pass the turn to Xenagos again. Xenagos will untap and we'll cast the top two cards. The first one is Rollicking Throng. It is a 1-3 Human Reveler, and when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of Xenagos' library, and the Xenagos cast that card. So we still have two more cards going. We have a Dance of Flame. Whenever a Reveler attacks, it deals one damage to each player, as well as a Impulsive Charge. At the beginning of combat this turn, all Revelers gain haste until end of turn, and attack this combat if able. All of these are going to be attacking, and they're all dealing one damage to us, and so there are four dealing one damage to both players, which will do a total of eight damage taking us down to nine. We will be blocking all three of the revelers in this case because at this point, getting them off the board seems good. This will kill one of the revelers and will trade the Leonin for another reveler. The other one will bounce off Daxos and will lose only one life to go down to eight from combat. So Leonin dies, reveler dies, reveler dies. We'll exile one of the revelers. And then at the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Ashiok draws a Gravebreaker Lamia, and we will discard the Farika Spawn. Elspeth draws an Eidolon of Inspiration, and we'll discard the Karametra's Blessing. And then we will untap. 
Ashiok draws a final death, and Elspeth draws a planes. So we'll play one of the planes, and then we will tap three to play the Eidolon of Inspiration. This is a 2-2 enchantment spirit at the beginning of combat on your turn. Target creature you control gains plus two, plus seven until end of turn. We will also spend one mana to cast Sleep of the Dead, targeting Xenagos. It says tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. It has escape two blue, exile three other cards from your graveyard. This is mostly to make sure Xenagos doesn't kill us directly. And Xenagos won't untap on the next untap step. We'll go to combat and we'll attack with the Underworld Charger and the Daybreak Chimera, which will get a plus two plus so. It won't matter because It'll still be able to kill the Rollicking Throngs all the same. And then we don't have any means of removing Xenagos from the battlefield here. And Axioc is mana screwed, and so we're going to pass the turn to Xenagos. Xenagos does not untap because of the Sleep of the Dead, and we'll cast the top two cards. The first one is Impulsive Return. Return two cards named Extent Piper from Xenagos Graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of combat this turn, Impulsive Return deals damage to each player equal to the number of Revelers on a battlefield. There are no Extent Pipers in the graveyard. And then we will cast the next one, which is Impulsive Return again. So this fizzles and does nothing. And then at the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Ashiok draws a Swimmer in Nightmares, and we will discard a Mind Rack Harpy. Elspeth draws a Plains, and we'll discard the Plains. We'll untap. Ashiok draws a Swimmer in Nightmares. Elspeth draws another Plains. We'll play a Plains. And I think we just have this, because if we use the Eidolon of Inspiration's ability to give Daybreak Chimera a plus 2 plus 0, and attack Xenagos with the Daybreak Chimera, that will defeat Xenagos, and we will win on normal difficulty. And we'll be right back with hard mode. All right, it's time for hard mode. We have four Rollicking Throngs on the battlefield, and we'll go ahead and draw eight cards apiece. Ashiok draws Sleep of the Dead, Mind Rack Harpy, Swamp, Furry Kaspan, Island, Funeral Rites, Island, and Myers Grasp. It's not great, but it is a start. We'll keep it. Elspeth draws a Hero of the Winds, Plains, Elspeth's Devotee, Indomitable Will, Plains, Daybreak Chimera, Sunlit, Hoplite, and Indomitable Will. Again, not a terribly good hand, but I think we can keep this one and hope that we draw more lands. So go ahead and get started by playing a Swamp and a Island over here, and then two Plains over here. We'll tap both of these and cast Sunlit Hoplite. This is a 2-1 Human Soldier. As long as it's your turn, it has First Strike. and gets plus 1, plus 0, as long as you control an Elspeth Planeswalker. Over here, we'll tap the Island and cast Sleep of the Dead targeting Xenagos. Xenagos is tapped. Then we will pass to Xenagos. Xenagos will cast the top two cards. The first one is Dance of Flame. And then the second one is Dance of Flame. So nothing is really happening as of yet. But when those revelers attack, it will be quite bad. And then at the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Ashiok will draw a Swamp, and we will discard the Funeral Rites. Elspeth will draw a Leonin of the Lost Pride, and we will discard the Hero of the Winds. We'll untap. Ashiok draws a Mind Rack Harpy, and Elspeth draws a Eidolon of Inspiration. This looks a little problematic here, but Ashiok will play the Island and the Swamp over here. And we're going to loot one more time to see if we can draw at least one more land for Elspeth. So we'll use the Harvester now. Ashiok draws a Myers Grasp, and we will discard one of the Mind Rack Harpies. Elspeth draws a, an Eidolon of Inspiration, still does not get the land that we need so badly, and we will discard one of the Indomitable Wills. At this point, I think we need to start getting things off the board, and so we will tap two and cast Indomitable Will. This is an aura with Flash, Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus two. Targeting the Sunlight Hoplite, making it a 3-3 First Striker on our turn. And then we will attack one of the Rocking Throngs with a Hoplite to finish it off. And then we will cast for 4 mana over here, the Ferricus Spawn. 
This is a 3-4 Gorgon and has Escape 5 Black, exile 3 other cards from your graveyard, and it escapes with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. When it enters the battlefield this way, each opponent sacrifices a non-Gorgon creature. And then we'll pass to Xenagos, who will cast the top two cards. The first one is the Ecstatic Piper. It's a 2-2 Santa Reveler, and when it enters the battlefield, Xenagos' Ascended attacks is turned if able. And when it leaves the battlefield, each player gains two life. We should also have untapped this one here. And then finally, we'll also cast the Dance of Panic. There are not five, which is good because we would probably get murdered. And Xenagos will come crashing in. We will probably have to not block this turn. And so we're going to take six and go down to 14. And then we'll go to our turn. We'll untap. Ashiok draws a Mindrack Harpy. And Elspeth draws a Sunlit Hoplite. Again, we are really mana screwed on one side here. We're going to go ahead and start killing things. And so let's go to combat. We will attack the Ecstatic Piper and a Rollicking Throng with our two creatures here. That will kill them both. We'll get four life from the Ecstatic Piper's death going up to 18, giving us a nice important life cushion here. And then we will spend two mana over here to cast another Sunlit Hoplite. And over here, We'll cast for four mana the Mindrack Harpy. This is a 3 2 enchantment harpy with flying at the beginning of combat on your turn. Each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. This is after combat, so it's not going to be triggering this turn. And then we'll pass to Xenagos, who will untap and then cast the next two cards. The first one is an Ecstatic Piper, going on the attack again. And then we have a Xenagos Strike. It deals 4 damage to each player. We have 2 players, so we're taking 8 to go down to 10. And then Xenagos is going to come at us. I think we are going to put the Sunlit Hoplite in the way, and it will die. It will take no more damage. And then at the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Ashiok draws a Swamp, and we will discard the Swamp. Elspeth draws a Elspeth Undaunted Hero, and we'll discard that. We'll untap, and feel kind of bad about where we are, with Elspeth especially. Ashiok draws a Swimmer in Nightmares, and Elspeth draws an Elspeth's Devotee, still unable to draw that additional land. We're going to use the Harvester again right now to see if we can draw that land. Ashiok draws a Sleep of the Dead, and we'll immediately discard that. Elspeth draws a Dreadful Apathy, and we will discard a Elspeth's Devotee at this point. I believe we can win this though, thanks to our very fortuitous set of Myers Grasps. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to go to combat. The Hoplite, the Furry Kispan, and the Harpy will attack their remaining creatures to kill all of them. And we'll get 4 life from the Ecstatic Piper to go up to 14. And then, with Xenagos alone on the battlefield, we just have to kill him. Fortunately, we have two Myers Grasps, both of which we will cast targeting Xenagos. They each say Enchantment Aura, Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets minus three, minus three. This takes him down to a 3-2, and this will finish him off. And then, despite their terrible luck in being mana screwed or mana flooded, these two Theros Beyond Death Planeswalker decks managed to defeat Xenagos in straight sets. Part of this was quite a bit of luck on the part of the decks, despite their bad luck. And so we will be glad about that. Let me know your thoughts about these games in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can hit subscribe. This was Refresh. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.